Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing a mid-month check-in slash Friday Reads type video. I've finished a handful of books so far this month so I thought I would do sort of like a mid-month check-in so that way I can talk about these books more than I would be able to if I just waited to the end of the month and tried to jam in like 10 books in one video. So let's get started. So the first book I want to talk about is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I was reading this one when I filmed my October wrap-up and then I finished it before the month of November even started because I posted that wrap-up a couple of days early. But yeah, I loved this book. It's so good. I was so hesitant and maybe even like slightly dubious about whether or not I was going to like this book just because everyone loves it and part of me is like it can't be that good but it's kind of that good. If you aren't aware in this book you are following this unnamed narrator who works as like a companion and so she travels to Monte Carlo with the woman that she works for as a companion and she ends up meeting this man there named Max de Winter. He's significantly older than her. He's in his like 40s and she's in her like early 20s they end up hitting it off and they decide that they should just get married so that way she doesn't have to like work as a companion anymore because they're going to leave Monte Carlo eventually so she ends up marrying him very quickly and then they return to his estate and it turns out that he has been married before to this woman named Rebecca and it seems like Rebecca haunts just everything about around the estate with the help around the house everything in the area just reminds her of Rebecca and she constantly feels like she's being compared to Rebecca. As the story unfolds you get to learn more about Rebecca and Rebecca's relationship with Max as well as how that impacts just everyone else around them. I've seen people call this a thriller. It's more like a suspense. On the front here it says the classic tale of romantic suspense which I feel like is a really great tagline for it. Don't let the romantic part steer you away from this book if you are someone who's like oh I don't like romance. It does get a little bit over dramatic at times but I feel like that just sort of adds to the atmosphere of this book. Um, it was the perfect book to read in the fall and if you want something slightly more gothic, uh, if it's rainy and cold where you are right now. This is a great book to pick up. I highly recommend it. I was completely thrown for loops during this book. It is, does get off to like a relatively slow start so keep that in mind but by the time I got to like the 100 page mark I was all in and the story really gets rolling and yeah that ending man. Well done Daphne du Maurier. So yeah really enjoyed this book. If you have recommendations on where I should go next with Daphne du Maurier since this was my first from her definitely leave that down in the comments below because I definitely want to read more from her. The next book that I finished this month was Hunger by Roxane Gay. This is a book I picked up for Nonfiction November. I will leave a link to my uh, TBR video in case you are interested in that. And also I did a full review of this book because I adored it so so much. So I'm just going to link to that as well as opposed to expounding upon it even more here. Yeah this is a fantastic essay collection and if you haven't picked it up already I would highly recommend it. Although I would give like trigger warnings for this book because she does openly discuss a lot of really difficult topics. But yeah I will link to my full review so you can check it out but this is definitely like one of the best books I've read so far this year easily. And then the next book that I finished was Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. Um, I read this one as an ebook. I'd gotten it when it was like on sale a long time ago and I was waiting to pick it up because I knew the movie was coming out in November so I made it a point to read it before I went and saw the movie. This is a great Agatha Christie novel. There's a reason why it's one of her like most well-known ones besides the fact that it's been adapted into a movie previously. Yeah I don't know. I don't really have a lot to say about it because it's hard to talk about Agatha Christie books without like spoiling the ending because the ending is really what makes or breaks an Agatha Christie book in my opinion. But yeah I definitely did not see it coming. I thought I'd read this one before but it turns out I hadn't or I just completely forgot what the ending was. <laughs> so I was still like completely surprised by everything that happened. Uh, it's a really fun one because it's each chapter is basically like an interview that Perot does with each of the passengers on the train and the reveals are really great. The book is definitely better than the new movie. I haven't seen the old movie so I can't really comment on how it compares to that one but the new movie is all right. I wouldn't say like rush out to theaters right away to go see it but it's a fun film and you should maybe check it out when it's out on DVD. I think that they rushed the reveals quite a bit and obviously they changed some stuff which is bound to happen but I just found the book to be more fun than the movie. Movie, but my friends who hadn't read the book uh, really enjoyed the film if only because of like the way everything turns out is quite a nice surprise. So yeah 
enjoyed the book. Definitely recommend it if you haven't read Agatha Christie yet. I think it's a good starting point for her too if you have no experience reading her books. Perot is always just snarky and a lot of fun and I enjoy him. So yeah. The next book I finished was Bonfire by Kristen Ritter. This was probably my most anticipated book from all of the books I got from Book of the Month in October. So I made sure to pick it up as soon as I could. This was great. I read it in about two days like over the course of a weekend. I found it to be super gripping, super compelling. Um, this is a thriller and you are following this woman named Abby Williams who grows up in this small town in Indiana and she ends up moving away from her small town and going to Chicago and becoming this like successful environmental lawyer and then she's brought back to her small town because there's an investigation going on with this major firm in her hometown about whether or not they're like contaminating the water and things like that and then as she's investigating that she starts to find out some other things about the people that she grew up with and the town that she grew up in and stuff happens. So yeah, like I said, it's a really thrilling, compelling read. I think that if you like thrillers, you'll like this one. It definitely has a tint of that like first novelness happening here. And it definitely feels like a book that's like meant to be adapted into a movie or TV show. I don't know if this has been optioned yet. I've heard rumors that it's being like shopped around. But yeah, if you want like a fun, fast paced book, this is definitely a good one to pick up. I think Christian Ritter is a pretty good writer and I'll definitely be checking out more books from her if she ends up writing anymore. I think that this is definitely like in that sort of unreliable female narrator, not quite like at Gone Girl level, but sort of like falls in the umbrella of all the books that have followed since then. So yeah, if you like those types of books, I would recommend picking this one up. And then the final book that I finished so far this month is Riverine. Riverine? Hmm, not sure how to say that, by Angela Palm. Um, this is another nonfiction book. This one is a memoir. This one also follows someone who grew up in a small town in Indiana, which was a really weird experience, but I'm going to actually make a book ride video about that. So, but yeah, this is a memoir from Angela Palm and she talks about growing up in this small town in Indiana, her relationship with this boy named Corey, who she like grew up across the river from and Corey ends up committing crimes and going to prison, things like that. So she talks about her experiences in the small town and her family and her relationship with Corey and knowing that they came from the same background but ended up in like completely different places as they grew up really, I don't want to say intrigued her, but it always was something that she like wrestled with as she grew up. Yeah, I gave this book a three out of five stars. I liked it. I didn't love it. Um, I was not super interested in Angela Palm herself, but I liked everything sort of around her. I liked the way that she looked at her life in this small town. I liked the way that she looked at her relationship in terms of like her and her family members even as she was like growing up and her point of view was changing and the way that she would butt heads with them even her relationship with Corey I found really really compelling but there were parts in here where she talks about like being a writer and that I don't really find that interesting and she talks about like she ends up moving to Vermont and that's just like the most boring place I think you can move to like there's nothing really that was added to it by talking about those sections. Like I feel like there could have been a good 50 pages that was removed from this book. Parts of it feels like really pretentious and stuff like that. So yeah, three out of five stars wasn't the worst book in the world, but it wasn't like my favorite either. All right, and then really quickly, what I am currently working on, um, I'm slowly waking my way through Washington by Ron Chernow. There is a very good chance that I will not be finishing this in the month of November, which I am completely okay with. Um, I stopped reading this for a little bit so I could read Murder on the Orient Express before, like I said, I went to the movie to see it. I fell behind on like my 4% everyday schedule because I have this as an ebook from the library as well. So I'm reading it like that because this is freaking heavy. But yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. I really enjoy biographies. So it's, I'm easy to please. And yeah, I'm going to just keep trekking along and I'll finish it when I finish it. Very unlikely I'll finish it in November. Maybe I'll do like a marathon reading of it over the Thanksgiving weekend here, but we'll see what happens. I, again, I'm in no rush. If it rolls over into December, I'm not gonna be like upset or anything. The other book that I am currently reading is Low Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. I actually posted on Instagram in my like Instagram stories I did one of those polls between this and Turtles All the Way Down and this one won by a landslide like nearly 70% of the vote went to this one. Uh, so I'm currently reading it and I'm enjoying it so far. I'm only about 50 pages in. This will probably be read over the course of like this week and this weekend. So yeah, no real thoughts on it yet, but I'm enjoying it because Celeste Ng is a great writer, so we'll see. And then in terms of the other nonfiction books that I have on my TBR, most likely the next one I pick up is going to be The Brain Defense by Kevin Davis, mostly because I have a little bit of memoir burnout. I feel like with 
Riverine and Hunger, and I feel like Bonfire sort of felt like a memoir as well, uh, even though it was like a thriller. I need something that's like not a personal story, so I think I'm going to go with The Brain Defense over the other books that I had on my TBR, and then if I finish this one, then we'll see how I feel. Uh, but yeah, I think I need a non-memoir, non-fiction to finish off this month. But again, there's still plenty of time left, so maybe I'll have time for more than this. But again, no guarantees. We'll see what happens. So yeah, that's everything that I have for you guys so far. Feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know if you've read any of these books, if you have any thoughts or opinions on them or any questions are on any of them or leave me a comment down below letting me know how your November reading is going especially if you are participating in nonfiction November let me know how your nonfiction reading is going so yeah that's all I have for now and thanks for watching